Hey guys, it's Mr. B. Today we're going to start the linoleum block printmaking project. Now, basically what you're going to do for this is find an animal that has an obvious texture or pattern on its fur or on its body. And then you're going to do a drawing that we're going to transfer into a linoleum print. What I would like for you to know or be able to say by the end of this video is that first that you can describe how a linoleum block print is made from start to finish. Second, that you can identify and describe several types of printmaking, including lino cut, engraving, etching, lithography, screen printing, and woodcut. And then lastly, that you can identify the prints of Kiki Smith and Andy Warhol and how they correspond to this project. So what I always start this out with is a question, and it's a pretty silly question, but it's this. If I told you to paint me a picture of a dog, how many copies of that painting would we have? And the answer is one. The advantage of printmaking is that you can make hundreds or thousands of identical images uh, with only one print block. Now I know in an age where everybody's got an inkjet printer at home or a laser printer at school, this doesn't seem like a big deal, but there was a time when the only way to reproduce an exact image was to use printmaking. So what is printmaking? Printmaking is the process of using an object, and in our case it's going to be a print block. We're going to cover it in a medium, ink, and transfer an image to paper, cloth, or some other surface. So printmaking is just a way to reproduce images. For our own project, we're going to use linoleum to carve into, and then we're going to use water-based ink to transfer our images to paper. This is called linoleum block printing, or sometimes shortened to call and called a lino cut. So what I'd like you to do right now, there's a video online uh, about an artist named Bill Fick, and he completes a linoleum block print from start to finish. Um, there's a link in the comments section of this video, but if you like to type things into the address bar, here you go. Uh, feel free to type all that out. But what I'd like you to do right now is just go watch that video uh, and then come back and we'll finish this one. See you guys in a few. Welcome back. Hopefully you thought that video was pretty cool. Um, I just want to mention a couple things before we move on because what we're going to do next is talk about some different kinds of printmaking. Now one thing you probably notice is that what Bill Fick did uh, was started by drawing on the actual linoleum and then he started using tools to cut out different kind of shavings uh, for all of his details. So what you'll notice is that when he put the ink on the print, the ink only stuck to the parts that he left flat. And that's going to be kind of important as I as I go through some other types of printmaking and explain. In a, in a linoleum print or a lino cut, you, you cut away what you don't want to print, and the ink sticks to the areas that you do not cut. So one ty other type of printmaking is called engraving. And what engraving is is the artist will actually take a piece of metal and they'll actually carve into the metal. And one of the more famous engravings that we see frequently uh, here in the United States, all our money was done originally with engraving plates. And so one thing about engraving is you couldn't enlarge the print. So everything that you see on our money, someone actually did by hand at the actual size that it is. Uh, this is a picture of an engraver working on the metal plate. So what an engraver does is they basically cut into the metal with very sharp tools. And then when they go to print, the ink sticks inside all of the places that they cut. So in contrast to what a lino cut, how a lino cut works, ink in an engraving sticks into the areas that you cut out rather than around them on the parts that are not cut. And here's just a zoomed in look at the picture of George Washington from the $1 bill. You can see the way that every line follows the contour of his face um, and what were surely thousands and thousands of very small cuts to make this look as realistic as it does. Etching is another type of printmaking and it's similar in a lot of ways to engraving except that instead of using tools to cut into the piece of metal, uh, what etching artists do is they will cover the piece of metal they're working on, the areas that they do not want to be cut. So in this case, the areas that are white uh, would be covered with something that's basically like tar. And then what they do is 
scrape away at that tar to get all of their lines and areas of, of white. And then they soak the piece of metal in acid. So this is a couple of etching plates being soaked in acid. And what the acid does is it eats into the metal, much in the same way that an engraver would carve into the metal. Etching uses acid to, to actually eat away at the plate. And that leaves, again, the areas that are, are bit into the metal. Ink will stick. And so the areas that you see that are black here are areas that were were, were sort of eaten into by the acid. Lithography is another type of printmaking. And one advantage of lithography is, is that uh, you, you can essentially use a drawing tool. It's called a lithography pencil. And it's basically a thick, waxy, tarry substance. And what most, the, there's something called litho paper that you can use to print, but in general, uh, lithography is done on large, flat, very smooth stones. So this is a picture of a lithography stone print that someone made. So one cool thing about litho is, is that you, you can draw right on the stone with that sort of tar pencil, and then you apply a very thinned out acid wash to the stone, and then you add ink. And what happens is, is the ink only sticks to the areas that you drew with the tar pencil, and then you can print onto paper. Uh, you may remember this picture from sixth grade. This is a drawing, or a, sorry, a lithograph by M.C. Escher. We talked about him during the tessellation project. Screen printing is another type of printmaking. Uh, screen printing more more commonly these days is actually done onto T-shirts, but there were these rather famous posters from when President Obama was running for his first term of office done by a printmaking artist named Shepard Ferry. And what a screen print is, or how screen printing works, is they'll use a very thin screen. You'll often hear it called silk screening. And basically, you can see on the t-shirt there, everything that's in black ink was able to get through that silk screen. They apply something called an emulsion to the screen, and that prevents ink from getting through. And so what you'll do is you'll plan out your design using the emulsion, and then the ink will only be able to squeeze through the screen in the places that you've left open. And then the last type of printing I wanted to talk about is woodcut printing. And actually, woodcut is very similar to what we're going to be doing with linoleum. This is actually a woodcut print uh, by an artist named Albrecht Dürer. Um, it's of a rhinoceros. And he actually drew this or created this based on descriptions of a rhinoceros, not from looking at the real thing. So you can see there are some odd inconsistencies like plates of armor uh, on the body. But a woodcut is created mostly the same way that we're going to work in linoleum and what you saw with Bill Fick, where the artist will actually use similar tools a little bit sturdier because they need to chip away at wood and not linoleum. But we use similar tools to chip away pieces of wood, and then again you have the same result. Whereas with um, etching and engraving, the ink sticks in the areas that are cut out. In a woodcut, the ink sticks to the flat areas that we do not cut, almost exactly the same as linoleum, with the exception of the material being used to make the print block. So I've just talked for a really long time. I'm going to encourage you to take a quick break, and when you get back, we're just going to look at some student examples, and then we can, uh, and hopefully you can move on to starting your own project. So I hope you had a good break. And now that you're back, we're going to talk about a couple more things, and we'll be ready to move on. So you might be wondering at this point, now that I've talked about printmaking for the last 10 minutes, what you're going to do. And I know I touched on it briefly at the very beginning of the video, but I'm going to do it again. You know how I like to repeat myself. Uh, you're going to make a linoleum print of an animal 
and it's an animal it, your animal should have a visible texture on its body for or feathers and if you're dying to do a smooth animal i mean i know i myself if you've seen my teacher example i did a killer whale so the issue is then you need to add some sort of visible texture or pattern to the background around the outside of the animal you're going to make five total prints four of them will be in four different ink colors on four different sheets of colored paper and then the last one you're going to do in black ink on white paper and that's for me i bind all of the prints that are done over each year into a booklet so that i have an example of everybody's work it's an easy way for me to have a copy of everybody's stuff uh, here's an example of a final project so you can see um, I know those top two pieces of paper look similar, but I promise one of them, the one on the right was purple at one point, not not blue. It's just faded over the last couple of years. But anyway, uh, this is a print of a meerkat. Um, again, four different colors of ink on four different colors of paper. Here's some other student examples. This is a Zorse, which is half zebra, half horse. They exist. She didn't forget to put stripes on half of the zebra. Here's an elephant. A uh, giraffe, a wolf howling. You can see he added the fur texture to the body and then also added the sort of shining sort of texture to the background as well. A badger, chipmunk, a dragon. Mythological creatures are okay as long as we can find a picture where it's realistically rendered. I just don't want any cartoon characters done for this project. A fox, and that's it. So I wanted to show you a couple professional artist examples uh, in addition to all the things we talked about because uh, these two artists are going to have some work that applies in some ways to what we're doing in class. Uh, the first artist we're going to look at, her name was, is Kiki Smith, um, and she's an American artist that does a lot of different work, but most of it uh, deals with social issues and women's issues. Um, and she uses animals as kind of metaphors for real world stuff in her work. Now, we're not getting quite so deep with what we're doing, but I do want to focus on what she does in her etchings, and she uses a lot of realism and texture in her animal prints. So here's one of a, a baby deer or a fawn. Here's one of a bird, and you can see that the feather texture is very developed on this one. And we have three birds. You can see again the feather texture is highly developed in these as well we have an opportunity with our linoleum prints too to really show texture if you remember back to the bill fick video he was able to get a lot of interesting detail and texture on the on the face that he did uh, despite how big it was it's a cat again you can see not only can you see the the furriness of the cat but you can see the spots on the fur as well and then the second artist i want to talk about is andy warhol and we'll talk about him briefly again when we when we get to the candy wrapper. Oh, my phone. We'll talk about him again briefly when we get to the candy wrapper project. But uh, Warhol did did several screen prints of famous people, and he did something similar to what we're doing with our color, in that he alternated colors and backgrounds for each portrait. So these are four portraits of Marilyn Monroe. And then these are nine portraits of the leader of China at the time. His name was Mao Zedong. But again, alternating in color in background. And so that's something that we're going to also do on our own prints. So here's what to do next, now that you've survived my voice for the last 20 minutes. The first thing you want to do is answer the questions on your board game handout that you should have been given in class. Secondly, you need to choose the animal you want. And then what I would like you to do is when you get into class tomorrow, to write it down on a piece of scrap paper with your name. And I will get it and print it probably during class. But if not, I will have it for you the following day. Uh, I, can't, I can't try to remember the animal everybody wants. So please do write it down and leave a note for me. Or if you'd prefer, you can always send me an email through your Office 365 account. And if I have time, I'll have it done when I get to work early before you're even out of bed. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in class.